Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to cover CNS pathology. Learning objectives are at the end of session, students should be able to analyze and evaluate the characteristics of different types of CNS tumors based on their gross and microscopic features. Analyze the gross features of fibromatosis and Alzheimer disease. As you know, you have covered in your lecture, there are two types of tumors in the CNS. Above the tentorium, which are called supratentorium, and below the tentorium, infratentorium. So, usually adults have more common supratentorial tumors, and in children, they are involving the posterior fossa and they are infratentorial. Extra neural spread is rare, almost non existent. But metastasis is most common from other side of the body to the brain. Clinical features patients usually present with raised intracranial pressure. So they present with headache, vomiting, slow pulse, papilledema. And there are symptoms related to local damage, nerve, tract deficits, paralysis and seizures. Important features, common adult tumors are supratentorial or anterior fossa location. Common childhood tumors are posterior fossa or infratentorial in location. CNS tumor do not metastasize outside the vein and spinal cord. Even benign tumors can be fatal according to the location. Now in the brain there are gliomas which can be graded low grade and high grade. There is a large supratentorial mass. Here is a midline shift and it is your necrosis. We examine this gross specimen more closely. Here you can see a large mass and you can appreciate the midline shift. If we, uh, because there are two hemispheres, you can see the mass is pushing the brain to the opposite side and also there is necrosis variegated appearance there are different shades because tumor undergo necrosis so these are the features of high grade glioma and if you see the microscopic appearance here there are areas of necrosis cell death leaving homogeneous pink areas and there is vascular proliferation as you can see in this microscopic field. So microscopically two features areas of necrosis and vascular proliferation. Then cystic or pilocystic astrocytoma. Usually these are low grade mostly occur in children and they occur in the posterior fossa. Now we examine it more closely. You can see it is well circumscribed. It has round uh, margins and it's homogeneous. You, the color of the cut section of the tumor has same consistency and same color throughout its cut section. And this is the microscopic feature, very low cellularity and there is Bipolar astrocytes with round to oval nuclei and they are mostly monoton monotonous. They are, there is no pleomorphism, though no change in their shape and size. Now, third tumor is appendymoma. Appendymoma are also well circumscribed masses, homogeneous in appearance and they are infratentorial. So, here you can see well circumscription and homogeneous cut surface. Now you can compare the low grade glioma, pilocytic and ependymoma. So you can compare both are well circumscribed. On the right side it has jelly like homogeneous appearance and on the left side of the tumor it is also homogeneous but it is solid looking. Now this is the microscopic appearance of appendymoma. You can appreciate small blue cell 
they are arranged around the blood vessels these are called perivascular pseudo rosettes so these are two vessels and around vessels you can appreciate uh, arrangement of the tumor cells so ependymoma arise from the ependymal lining of the fourth ventricle above the brain stem and bulging toward the cerebellum now medulloblastoma these are malignant tumors arising in the posterior fossa usually they are infratentorial and they occur in the children if you closely examine they have infiltratic margins and also they have different shades so it means they have necrosis and hemorrhage you can closely watch the cut surface is not of same color so they have heterogeneous surface and their outline is also irregular so it is a destructive lesion it show necrosis hemorrhage and it is usually infratentorial it means it more commonly occur in children now this is medulloblastoma here you also appreciate rosettes but these rosettes are called homer right rosettes because central they uh, uh, there is a neuropil light blue area there are no blood vessels so small blue round cell tumor pattern is homer right rosette now you can compare the both tumors on the left side there are blood vessels and tumor cells are arranged around the blood vessels these are called pseudo rosettes on the right side the tumor is blue cell but the they are forming rosettes around light pink material so perivascular pseudo rosette are characteristic feature of ependymoma and homerite rosettes are characteristic feature of medulloblastoma now the meningeal tumors meningeal meninges are the covering of the brains and meningeal tumors are attached to the meninges and because there is no space uh, or there is skull so meningeal tumors they press the underlying brain parenchyma so meningiomas are benign tumors they are well circumscribed round in shape attached to the dura and underlying brain is compressed so here you can see well circumscribed round mass and the underlying brain is compressed now this is the microscopic features of uh, meningioma typical uh, these you have uh, learned this dystrophic calcification in your first year so can you name these structures well these are somoma bodies these are the uh, dystrophic calcification necrosed tissue is calcified so they are multiple somoma bodies somoma bodies uh, they uh, arise from the syncytial cells meningoothelial walls and these meningeal cells have eosinophilic cytoplasm so in some tumors there is whirling and in some tumors you can find somoma bodies now some meningiomas may show only whirling pattern with indistinct cell boundaries and eosinophilic cytoplasm so now comes the metastatic tumors metastatic tumors mainly are carcinomas five common primaries accounting for 80% of mets these are breast lung skin kidney and git they usually occur at the junction of gray and white matter in the distribution of middle cerebral artery as you can see the arrow is pointing towards a metastatic tumor now the neurofibroma they may be cutaneous or plexiform here is you can see cutaneous uh, neurofibroma and here are the plexiform large high areas of skin these two types are called plexiform now schwannoma is another tumor arising 
from the eighth cranial nerve. Its typical location is cerebellopontine angle and it is well circumscribed, it is benign and can be removed. Now the Alzheimer's disease, here there is a comparison on the, there is a healthy brain and advanced Alzheimer's disease. The features are dilated ventricle, widened sulci and there is shrinkage of the gyri. So it, it is a condition in which there is atrophy of the brains. So three features on gross inspection, widened ventricles, there is a dilated, dilatation of the ventricles, widened sulci and gyri, they are shrinkage. So this is another specimen showing widened uh, sulci and atrophic gyri. Another cut section showing dilated ventricles, widened sulci and atrophic gyri. So this was all about your image session. Any query you can call me and the OSP will be analyzing and evaluating. So if there is a microscopic, you have to differentiate between the different tumors and you just not, uh, why you are uh, saying this is a benign and this is a malignant, depending upon the image, you should analyze and evaluate. This is a Homer white uh, rosette because it contains neuropil, the pseudo rosettes have blood vessel in the center and in the history you also look for it is supratentorial, infratentorial, age of the patient. So these all uh, information you have to analyze. Good luck. Thank you.